The University of Ockham is one of Britain's most venerable institutions. It is, and it is not like any other university. Lions have scarcely yet blown down its ancient corridors. If anything at all should be lacking, there is no lack at all of that fine, superior, corporate entity which is found in every body of learned men, and nowhere is this more observable than among the Fellowship of St. Simeon's College. They are united in believing that their learned fellowship is without parallel in the active universe. Loyally, the members of the senior common room review each other's books, and loyally, they unite in resisting the onward march of progress. I was just telling Waterhouse he's chosen a bad night to honor us. The one night when the only scientist among our fellowship is uh, absent on other duties. But thanks to the uh, ingenuity of science, uh, those artery will shortly be making a spectral appearance amongst us. Ah, uh, yes. We must adjust our chairs. Good evening. The most provocative statement heard from a scientist in this country in recent years hit the headlines today. They come from a man well known to television viewers. He is Professor Bowles Ottery. Professor Bowles Ottery, in the past, some pretty vicious things have been said about you. Yes. What do you uh, least admire about your character yourself? Oh, vanity, arrogance, bad temper. Pretty well any of the seven deadly sins you care to mention, Cliff. And which of your many characteristics do you most admire in yourself? Humility, modesty, sufferance of fools, are pretty well any of the cardinal virtues. Professor Bowles Artery, if you were not a scientist, uh, what would you have chosen to be? A jack of all trades and master of none. I'd rather like to be a You should have been a politician. I think I would rather choose, like most of us, to be a dictator, a benevolent, fatherly dictator. Like most of us? Hmm. A dictator. Now, what's your reason for saying you want to be a dictator? Oh, I'm not so arrogant as to want power for its own sake. No, no. But I do want to stop the human race committing suicide. What would you propose doing about it? How would you set about the task? Well, we must stop people from breeding. Mustn't we, Cliff? Control the size of families. Eliminate the mentally sick. Sterilize the incompetent. Presuming you're right, how would you begin? By eliminating the mad, the deformed, the diseased, the degenerate. We must clean up the human race if we are not all to perish. I know my bowl's artery will contrive to save the opposite sex. What did you think of the program tonight? What program? Why, my interview, of course. Oh, I wasn't watching. Oh. Well, Cliff was recording in Studio B. That cuts way out. He's really wild. Hmm? Cliff Richard, he's on the scene. I'm for him. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, you're talking Swahili. Swahili? That's music, man. Hello? Makeup room two? Professor Roo? Thank you. That'll be for me. It's a mouse with a voice like liquid fire. Fancy. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, Professor Bowles Ottery speaking. Delia Beauclair. Good evening. You must think I have a nerve disturbing you like this. Not at all. I was so impressed with your interview tonight, I felt I just had to ring. How very kind of you. Remarkably civil of you. So stimulating. Thank you for telephoning. Just when I needed to hear a civilized voice. I felt I just had to talk to you. Well, we'll be meeting in the lab tomorrow. I know, but it's so difficult to talk there. Well, look, why don't we have lunch together? Somewhere quiet where we can talk undisturbed. That would be absolutely wonderful, sir. Bye.
Miss Brooks. Morning, Professor. Morning, Fred. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Sir Robert. I uh, won't keep you a moment. Thank you. Now, let me see. Where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, Miss Brooks, you put forward a very interesting suggestion. But for the moment, I'm at a loss to remember what it was. Hmm? Oh, no, surely it was your suggestion. Yes. I remember. Your last words were, let's see the effects of cetoserum methacrylate at the third stage. Yes, indeed, so they were. Strange, I could have sworn it was your idea. It's always seemed to me one of the beauties of research. It doesn't matter who puts forward the suggestion, provided you arrive at the right end. Perhaps the same truth holds good in other departments of life. Yes. An interesting idea. Well worth pursuing. At leisure. And meanwhile, to work. Uh, Fred, the Cito Steril Methacrylate, please. Oh, yes. Already now, Professor. Good. Syringe, Miss Brooks. Fred, bring on the mouth, sir. There we are, Sammy. Come on. You dog won't hurt. Am I right in thinking you're addressing that animal by name? Yes, sir. Sammy, sir. How nauseating. Now, the creature will feel no pain, apart from the prick of the needle. <laughs> There. It will sink immediately into a deep coma, from which it will awake in 10 to 12 hours' time, ready and eager for a meal of lettuce, or whatever the wretched things eat. <coughs> yes, well... Perhaps instead, um, Cito Laurel methacrylate. Oh, perhaps. Oh, but that would take too long to set up. Let's call it a day. Hmm? After all, Pasteur worked for half a lifetime before he made his great discovery. Indeed. All right, Fred, you may go to lunch now. Oh, yes. See you Monday morning. It was good of you to telephone me in that madhouse yesterday. Would you care to have lunch? How lovely. Oh, not hungry. Oh, my words, it's delicious. I'm just not used to meals on this scale. You should cultivate a better appetite. It covers the nose. What do you have now? Nothing. Mrs. Pike does a very good mushroom on toast. I couldn't. And Tom, uh, mushrooms on toast for one, and uh, you may bring the other bottle of claret. It's amazing how undiscovered this place has remained. It's an oasis for me. Often come here for a snack and a quiet think. Might be a hundred miles from the university instead of just one. Ah, good afternoon, landlord. Good morning, Mrs. Pugh-Smith. Well, here we are again. Yes, here we are again. And what have you got for me this week, I wonder? Usual? In the box, I mean. Oh, dear. Not a great deal, I fear. Ah, never mind. Every little helps, doesn't it? Oh, dear. <clears throat> I have a touch of dyspepsia. I had a hurried luncheon, you know, in order to come out with my boxes. I wonder what would be good for that, landlord? Gin and pepper. Ah, peppermint cordial. And gin, isn't it, landlord? Large gin. Oh, well, perhaps so. When it was first suggested by Ben Brown, it was received with incredulity, but surely when you think about it, it's quite a lot. But I think I begin to understand. It's a difficult concept at first approach. The mind needs leading up to it, I mean. Quiet. But one, surely not beyond you as a graduate of this university. And how much will that be, landlord? Same as usual, four and six. Thank you. 
Now I really must be getting along. I have a lot more calls to make. Good afternoon, landlord. As you know, dear Mrs. Bowles Ottery, I am not a scandal mugger. But, oh dear me, how did you know I was going to say but? A little bird told me. But the young woman in the question woman is my husband's research assistant. I see no reason why they shouldn't discuss matters interesting to them both over lunch. As long as it ends there. As long as they don't continue to discuss them in bed, you mean. Well, I would not put it quite so bluntly. Why ever not? So much simpler to come straight to the point. The young woman I'm sure they I find am... much more interesting things to talk about in bed. The young woman, I am told, has a far from good reputation. So, by whom? Ah, I am not at liberty to say. In that case. But... Oh, I didn't know. If you're talking secrets, I'll have Sarah bring me tea in the study. It's Sarah's day off, and we're not talking secrets. <laughs> at least we're not. Isn't it odd? I haven't had the pleasure of seeing Mrs. Pugh Smith for what? It must be three months. Then today, our paths crossed twice within three hours. I was in the Highland Boy having lunch with a colleague, young Delia Brooks. And there was Mrs. Pugh Smith, all alone with a large gin in the public bar. I called for the collecting box. Ah. Uh, my little good cause, you know, the four-footed friends. And I was taking a peppermint cordial for my dyspepsia. Yes, well, uh, I mustn't outstay my welcome. That would be impossible. The university is such a small world. Isn't it, Professor? You're a very brave little woman. The show must go on. Ache. Oh, break one for me, too. If she ever comes here again, I must remember not to use the best china. However, in her case, it was worth it. And more. What do you want? Ask a silly question, you'll get a silly answer. Why should such people be tolerated? Hmm? I defy you to give me a reasonable answer. They cause enormous trouble and intense misery. The few smiths of this world do more harm than genuine criminals. Take today, for example. Darling, I'd much rather leave it than take it if it's all the same to you. Oh, nothing. Sly, odious, meddling, malevolent... Lady. <laughs> Pest in the house and a plague in society. Her removal would be the signal for public rejoin about the Aubrey professorship. I thought it might be useful for me to keep my ear to the ground. I can't quite understand why it suddenly becomes so important to you. It's perfectly simple. Firstly, the Aubrey lectures will give me a world platform to push the interest of science. And secondly, because Hughes and his lot are ganging up to stop me getting it. They've always hated me, being the solitary scientist in their smug little net. Then I know who will sign. Bowles Ottery. It's dead against all his principles. Good he... evening, gentlemen. He'll be with you at the first whiff of printer's ink. Good evening, Professor. We were just speaking of you. Kindly. I have no doubt. Naturally. We were discussing the abolition of capital punishment, and I suggested to Meredith here that he might canvass your opinion. Oh. Why should you think that I am an abolitionist? Not so. I think that hanging is a capital punishment. <laughs> but administered to the wrong people. And for the wrong reason. But, but surely, Professor. And for what offences would you apply the penalty? Broadly and at random. For offences which are not even considered crimes under the law as it stands. For example, for scandalmongering. For hypocrisy. For intellectual snobbery. For the debasement, not only of the morals, but of the taste of the young. For moral blackmail. Dear, dear, you scientists really do frighten me. Would any of us survive your judgment? Good evening, gentlemen. Good, Good evening, evening, master. master. Good evening, master. Ah, oh, good evening, Bowles Ottery. With us again after your weekly rampage among the flesh pots of London? Yes, master. We must seem very small beer to you after your excursion into professional entertainment. Any uh, particular reason for dining with us? 
I like to keep my ear to the ground, Master. I thought we might discuss Albury Professorship. You can take it from me, you won't get it. Deny it, sir. I suppose your wife having been on the stage has been of great help to you. Cito Laurel methacrylate, I think you said, Miss Brooks. It seemed a logical step, sir. Hmm. Right, let's get started. Fred, you know the stuff. Oh, yes, sir. Fred. Yes, sir. Answer that, will you? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sir. What? Bones, Oscar, would like to I'll be back by the time that's ready. I have a strange feeling we're onto something this time. Hello, right, darling. Kerry, you know I hate disturbing you at the lab. That's all right. What is it? Well, this sounded rather important. What did? Dr. Brass telephoned. Will you call round and see him? Would I call and see him just because he's seen your proctor? Who the devil does he think I am, a slotty nosed undergraduate? No, darling, I'm sure he doesn't. Anthony's in trouble again. Oh, I see. Your nephew, your wasteful nephew, is in trouble again. So I have to stop my work and go and eat humble pie for a petty official whom I detest and despise. Yes, dear. Just to please me. Uh, after all, I did promise his mother to look after him. You know that as well as I do. It wasn't part of my marriage vows to look after your dissolute relatives. No, dear. Uh, talking of marriage vows, is Miss Brooks looking seductive today? I haven't noticed. You're a blackmailer, that's what you are. All right, I'll go and see the old idiot. When? I don't know, later on. I must go now, something on the boil. Goodbye. Hmm? Oh, yes. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. You haven't, we were just ready. This time, I think we can confidently expect a state of coma. Fascinating. Though not quite what we anticipated. Clearly suffering no pain. One might almost say it's in a state of euphoria. Eh? A state of complete well-being, friend. Ah, the expected coma has supervened. It's not coma, Professor. Hmm? He's dead. Oh, really? Very odd. Uh, pop him in a bottle. I'll look at him later this evening. We'll try a smaller dose to see if we can produce the state of euphoria without the subsequent death. We'll need more distillate for that. Well, Fred, set the infernal machine going, will you? I'm off to see the senior proctor. Hope you haven't been naughty. I'll uh, try to telephone you later. Hope you can. Yes. I had better come straight to the point. I thought it my duty, yes, I considered it my duty to have a word with you about uh, a distressing matter, a grave offense against public morals and university discipline. Uh, Miss Austin, I must ask you to leave us for a moment. Yes, Dr. Brass. ...situation in one of the boathouses on the meadows. Rather damp and chilly this time of year, I would have thought. With a young woman from the town. Would the offence have been less grave if his companion had been a female undergraduate from St. Ethelburgus? Not less grave, no, but perhaps more acceptable. After a chase, he was apprehended in the meadows without his trousers. Oh, good. I am delighted to hear he treats his clothes with proper respect. The young woman also was divested of, uh, well, of certain articles of apparel. 
Really? I'd scarcely thought they'd bother to put one at all these days. Professor, this is no matter for levity. Pray accept my apologies. My seeming levity was as a mask to hide a sense of profound shock. We must send him down. But, Dr. Brown... No. There can be no two ways about that. We must send him down. Dr. Brown, you will understand that I in no way wish to pervert the course of justice when I ask that you come to our home and discuss this matter more fully with my wife and me. I feel it is our duty to explore any means whereby this wretched youth may be properly chastened without having a promising career blasted. Well, perhaps it is our duty. Yes, perhaps it is our duty. Thank you. Well, the sooner the better. Shall we say this evening, 8.30? Come in, Miss Austin. A quiz custodiat ipse custodies, Dr. Brown. Hmm? You do remind me of our revered senior proctor. This is behind you, this is before you. This is above you, this is it. No trace of the distillate at all. No trace of any effect on the fifth year. There comes up for election an academic honor unique in this or any other seat of learning, the John Aubrey Professorship Extraordinary. For some centuries past, the distressing vulgarity of an election has been avoided. This year the situation is less happy. There is a, a younger faction, a, a rebellious younger faction, who proposed to nominate Professor Bowles Ottery, a, a scientist, for the chair. Gentlemen, we must combine to resist this affront. Doctor, I'm certain that I speak for the entire company when I ask if you yourself will not consent to stand for the election. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, I would remind you that the appointment is for five years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Has anyone any other suggestion? I beg to suggest Dr. Hughes. Uh -huh. Thank you. I would not have presumed to seek this, but if it be your wish, I accept gladly and humbly. Let's try half a dose on you, George. It may well be so, Mrs. Bowles, Ottery. Indeed, I'm very sorry that the sins of the children had to be visited on the parents. Dr. Browse, do you have any children? And I'm not married, Mrs. Bowles, Ottery. Oh, I see. Then I dare say you haven't. Precisely. I I'm not suggesting that my nephew should escape scot-free, but surely... A uh... Could you not devise some more merciful method of punishment? I fear not. And that is better. Kindly excuse me. 
It's the thought of his mother, my sister, which upsets me. She's such a saintly person, so full of good works, though so frail in health. How very sad. She's always been such a devoted mother. Well, too devoted, perchance. It may well be that her early indulgence... Oh, you're not leaving, Dr. Brown. Well, I fear that I've already missed my young lady's Bible class, and I do have other duties. But I have just decanted a very special port. Oh, dear me, no more. It's the last of a legacy I had from my uncle. He was the dean of Granchester. You may recall. Well, perhaps in those circumstances, just, uh... Half a glass. Your duties as senior proctor, on top of your normal teaching program, must be a very great strain. They are tiring but stimulating. After all, discipline is an inseparable part of education. Well, may the Lord inform our minds and lighten our hearts. Benedictine, Benedictine. If I mistake not, Mrs. Bowles Ottery, you came to our university from a far distant world. From the stage, yes. I once played Pooh Bar in the Mikado. Really? Yes, an amateur production, of course, but, well, I've often wondered. It's a hard life. It requires dedication and a sense of humor. I've often wondered when, as occasionally we all must do, I feel that life here is, is too constricted to make the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime. Why, well, I really must take my leave. My, this very pleasant conversation has made me forget the sad purpose of my coming here. So you won't change your mind? My dear lady, the university statutes lay down certain standards of behavior. I'm merely the humble instrument that carries them out to make the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime. Clary. What's the matter? Don't drink that muck. Don't think I'd waste good port on an old idiot like that, do you? After all that, I really need something stronger than port. Mm, this will do you no good. I hope something nasty happens to him. Careful. Your gypsy great great grandmother may be working tonight. Jolly well, I hope she is, too. <laughs> 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 oh, the lady she was dressing, addressing for a ball, when she saw a great big tinker standing up against the wall, with his bonny ragged bonnet, his whiskers flying free, and his wee bits, wee bits, far and hanging low upon his knee, and the wee bits, wee bits, far and hanging low upon his knee. Hurt? What? No. Uh, one moment. Willie? Yes, my dear? Please bring me my coffee. Yes, Graham. No. Stark naked, you see? Well, who would have thought it? Although I've always thought there was something a little peculiar. Uh, Crumb, I'll telephone you back in about five minutes. Uh, no, 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 just a small domestic matter that I must deal with. Uh, very well, then, yes. Professor. Morning, Sir Robert. Did you post more from the racks? I did indeed. And with the most extraordinary results. Oh, what did you find? Nothing. No sign of any effect on the blood cells or the brain tissue. So? So? We've encountered a remarkable coincidence, that's all. The rat died from some cause quite unconnected with our experiment. Therefore, I propose to repeat the experiment with another rat. If I may say so. You may. Very logical and scientifically correct. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I really can't believe that of Dr. Brass. Oh, but I assure you it's true, Lady Emily. Uh, you know he'd been at the Bowes Arteries that evening. And, well, everybody knows about his habits, don't they? 
She was on the stage. Oh, was she? I've also reason to believe that she's a secret drinker. Oh, no, no, I'd really rather you didn't ask me why I say that. I'd be betraying your confidence. Though you can take my word for it, uh, but uh, you won't let it go any further. Ah. Well, what do you say about that, Miss Brooks? Probably the dancing rat was abnormal. I agree. So we'll continue to work along this line. But uh, we must give this creature a few hours to see if any symptoms develop. Good idea. I think we should divide ourselves into watches. Now, let me see. I shan't be free until rather later tonight. Oh, uh, Fred, could you uh, remain on duty for the moment? Yes, certainly, sir. And uh, until five o'clock, sir, Miss Brooks, perhaps you'll take over then. Five o'clock? Yes, that's I'll come enough. and consult with you at about nine o'clock this evening. Understood? No, I don't understand. When they found out what sort of fish they had in their net, the sergeant telephoned the inspector, the inspector telephoned the superintendent, the superintendent telephoned the chief constable, and the chief constable telephoned the vice chancellor, with the result that no one will appear in court and the whole thing didn't happen. Sherry. It may not have got into court, but old Mother Pew Smith made sure it's got into every drawing room in North Ockham. Thank you. Dr. Brass has been stricken by some unstated nervous malady. And he'll be absent from his duties until further notice. Meanwhile, that old vulture will find some other bones to pick. And Anthony? I think you may take it that that has disappeared from the records, too. In fact, I know it has. How do you know? Ah, them that asks no questions gets told no lies. So, he's safe on this occasion. But he mustn't gamble on such miraculous intervention every time. Why is my gypsy great-great-grandmother? I wonder. Frightening, rather, isn't it? Yes, it is. Marvel. Are you into supper tonight? Hmm? Uh, no, I said I'd dine in hall and play bridge after. I see. Interesting book. Oh, yes. Relative toxicity of carcinogenic substances in the blood. By K. Bowles Ottery. I'll put it on my mist list. <laughs> well, how's uh, Fred's little friend, uh, Winnie the Pooh, or whatever this one's called? Not a symptom in sight. Well, nothing will develop this evening, I should think. I suggest we puzzle the whole thing out from scratch tomorrow. Hmm? It's rather like snakes and ladders, isn't it? Go back to square one and wait till you throw a double six. That's research for you. <laughs> Fred left some supper. All right to give it to him? Yes, yes. That was just reflex action. Oh, scratch. I'm not at all sure that I approve of middle-aged men trying to seduce young women. Aren't you? There he is, still at it. Never knew such a glutton for work. Always on the job. All work and no play. We scientists' minds work differently. Once the Yes, rather more than I wanted. The uh, master wanted another rubber. He was one and ninepence down. 
How did you finish? Six months out. Any news about the Aubrey professorship? Nothing much, no. Um, Hughes is canvassing like mad, but I don't think I've got anything to worry about. Oh, there is one thing. Namely? Hmm? Namely? Uh, Tannenbaum's coming over. You know, he's at Toronto doing very much the same sort of thing as I am. The master said that the prime minister rang up to say it'd be a good thing if I met here. When's that? He's spending 48 hours in London on his way to Rome. Probably this coming weekend. If that's the case, I'll have to go and see him. It's a nuisance, but the PM wants it. Of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's nothing settled yet. I may not have to go. I hope not. Why? It all sounds very mysterious and important. I'd rather stay home and dig the garden. Any, um, <clears throat> any news, Miss Ann? Don't think so. Oh, yes. Old Mother Pew Smith was on the blower. What the hell for? You wouldn't hear my kittens in a bathroom. Only that, did I know you were working late at the lab with Miss Brooks? I went in there for five minutes after dinner to check the result of an experiment. Oh, darling, aren't you lucky? Someone should ask. You went for five minutes, but how long did you stay? Possibly ten. I said some wives would ask. I didn't. You're welcome, if you want to. I don't. One must follow up the sequence of chemical events till one arrives at the final solution. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Tom. See the fight on telly last night? No. No, I was out. Any good? Not much. British heavies nowadays is like hippopotamuses. All grunt and thump. That's what I always say. No scientific training, Tom. How are you doing? Thanks. Tom, what rubbish is this? Hmm? Why, Mrs. Pugh Smith, oh. this is a surprise. Yes, <laughs> Do you um come here often? Oh, uh, just once a week. O on my ride. <laughs> You must have a drink. Oh, no, no, thank you. I don't. I was just um, reading your poster. Oh, yes? Professor, I'm going to be very daring and take my courage in both hands. I, I, I really don't know how to ask. Landlord, yeah, I'll have another peppermint cordial with just a wee gin in it. Uh, I have to be daring to nerve myself to be daring. <laughs> One moment. It would be the greatest help to the meeting, and that means to the cause, of course. Of course. Uh, oh, thank you. Mm. If we could have somebody really well known as chairman. Ah. How about Dr. Brass? Hmm? He's always ready to help a good cause. He's our senior prophet, you know. He'll give your meeting a great deal of status. Poor dear Dr. Brass has been taken ill. You hadn't heard? Uh, no. My thoughts were ranging beyond local fame ah. to someone who is a national figure. Oh, how surely you can guess. No, I'm afraid I can't. Then I shall have to tell you, you dear, modest man. Professor Bose Ossery, I was thinking of you. Well, I know. That. I struck up my courage and I said it. Well. Oh, now what? <laughs> yes, of course. Why not? I'd be oh, delighted. Thank you. Now I must tie me to the printers without delay. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. to be early. I was uh, just working out the seating. Yourself in the center, of course, with Lady Davidson on your left and little me on your right. 
Excellent. I thought perhaps just a few introductory phrases, and then perhaps later something rather more at length. Uh, when I move to the length after your speech. The very thing I was going to suggest. Mm. I, uh, <clears throat> I hope these are all right. Oh. I felt that, as it was, in a sense, an open-air occasion. Splendid. Of course, it comes with your TV experiences. Oh, dear, the doors will be opening in a few minutes. I'd better go and get ready. Uh, Ralph! Members of the committee, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the scandal against which I am going to ask you to register your vote of protest is the proposal to establish a greyhound racing track within the precincts of our city. The Greyhound is by nature a peaceable and domesticated animal. But if its natural bloodlust is encouraged by putting it in the pursuit of electric hell, it will very soon lust after the blood of live hearts. Nobody's only be animal blood that will flow. <laughs> I plead with you to preserve the values of our dearly beloved country. And I will lead you in that dear old form. Have you taken leave of your senses? No. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, Inspector Putt, isn't it? That's right, sir. Could I have a word with you? By all means, if you don't mind walking with me, I'm rather late. Not at all. Glad I caught sight of you. Funny business that, wasn't it? Oh, about Mrs. Pugh Smith, you mean? Yes. Before she collapsed, didn't her behavior strike you as odd? Oh, rather more than odd. I thought she was intoxicated. Maybe. She had some gin in her handbag, but everyone agrees she was her usual self when she started to speak. Yes, unfortunately. Unfortunately, sir? Oh, I know what you mean. Speak no ill of the dead, eh? Come, let's face the fact, Inspector. She was a bore and a mischief maker, and the world is better off without her. I see, sir. Providence sometimes works for the good of humanity, Inspector. Now, if you'll excuse me. Yes, sir. Yeah. I never saw a clearer case of death from natural causes. 
Willie Pugh Smithfield. Decent little man, I always thought. I bumped into him, oddly enough. Shall I say he is taking the bereavement with great fortitude? Mm. I thought he might. The situation has its compensations for him. Half her money goes to the four-footed friend, the other half to him. Then there's a widowed cousin, so-called, in Malvern. She'll come and keep house for him now. He spent her for years. How nice for him. Oh, I do have to go away this weekend. I expected you would. The master said the Prime Minister was very insistent. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to pack? Dinner jacket or not? Don't know. Better have it in case. Just the usual things. I don't suppose you'll really need the dramas, will you? But I'll put them in. Just for the sake of appearance. When lusty young blood is on fire, let her body be tall, her waist be small, and her age not above of eighteen. Let her care for no bed, but here let her spread her. Good evening. May I have my key, please? Good evening, Professor. Did you enjoy your constitutional? Yes, indeed. Very bracing. I've worked up a good appetite for dinner. Ah, dinner's at seven sharp, if you don't mind. Seven? Well, that's a bit early for my gastric juices. If you don't mind, though, the cook leaves at eight, and she has the washing up to do before she goes. The Catering Wages Act, you know. Yes. Well, I must rush if I'm to get a bath before dinner. I'm afraid the hot water system is being overhauled, but I think the water should be quite warm. Thank you. That sounds positively cosy. Anything we can do. They got clear, sir. I'll uh, think for a while. Excuse me, sir. Busy tonight? Yes. Good evening, madame. Are you taking dinner, madame? Thank you. Dear, dear, dear. I shall have to set another table. You see, we weren't expecting, madame. But I won't keep you a moment. I won't keep you a moment, sir. Uh, excuse me. Unless you prefer dining alone, would you care to keep me company? How very kind. Perhaps that would be less trouble. No trouble at all, madame. No trouble at all. I'm sure. But this gentleman has offered, and I have accepted. I suppose we should introduce ourselves. My name is Bowles Ottery. Mine is Barrington. A uh, Miss Barrington? Allow me, please, madame. That is so. And no, we leave that for the moment. Some sherry, I think. Would you take a glass? How very kind. Uh, some mantha mia, please. Mantha mia? Mantha mia? Mantha mia? Mantha mia? Uh, why Barrington? No why in particular. Just something beginning with B to go with my luggage. Uh, what room they put you in? Four. And you? Uh, three. How practical. Yes, eminently. This looks like the kind of hotel where the corridors are cold and drafty. Seems like quite a kind of hotel altogether. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be unkind. After all, we wanted seclusion. And we have it. Dost thou thus through windows and through curtains call on us? Must to thy emotions 
lovers' seasons run. Tell him to go to hell. You come back here. Saucy, pedantic wretch. Go chide late schoolboys and sour apprentices. Go tell court huntsmen that the king will ride. Care to ride over in this direction? He might learn something to his advantage. How do you feel? Astonished. What? At how little guilty I feel. That will come later. You'll go back to your room, go to sleep again, wake up feeling as guilty as hell, and decide you never want to see my face on a pillow again. And what should I do then? Come right back here. The only thing to do with guilt is to drown it in itself, stew it in its own juice. I ought to go before the place wakes up. I should unmake my bed. Darling, the chambermaid is probably used to human nature, even in this hotel. Anyway, you should have unmade it last night. Suppose I should. My darling schoolboy professor, you should grow up. That's your trouble. Anyway, there's no need to go quite yet. I don't know. I, uh... There's no need to go quite yet. Poor old Gary Wary. You really have set your heart on it, and I should so love to have you, John Aubrey, Professor. What's the betting? Oh, fairly even money between Hughes and me. But there is a third small group led by Fisher who refuse to commit themselves. Do you want it very much? Oh, fairly much. The more so because I know that Hughes and company are ganging up to stop me getting it. Then I suppose vanity prompts me to want to speak to the university. It's a wonderful chance to rub a few new ideas into people's heads. Hmm. I know exactly how you feel. Do you? That's rather clever of you. I don't really know myself. Nobody knows except perhaps... Except perhaps... Oh, nothing. A ghost walk for a moment, that's all. Let's talk about something else, shall we? Yes, I'm sorry. It was foolish of me to talk about things that belong to your other world. Let's go back to me being Miss Barrington that you picked up in a seaside hotel. That's better. Delia's a good for Carrie. Love is love, so why not love and let love, darling Carrie Wherry? <laughs> I've decided to go away for a while. Would you like to explain why? I don't think there's any need to. A certain situation has come into being as a result of your choice. Well, not entirely. You see... I'd rather not, if you don't mind. I detest the attitude of mind which says we're all grown-up people. Let's sit down and pick over our dirty linen. No more than I. Then don't be tempted into it. You started all this without any help from me. It's up to you to decide what you want to do about it. Meanwhile, I'd prefer to be somewhere else. May I ask where? I doubt if there's any right to ask. But I'm going along as general unpaid assistant on a tour of a play which an old chum of mine is doing. Sounds very practical. You know, I only smoke filters. We're very lucky, really, with our children. Not even a dog or cat confused the issue. No responsibility. Except each other. Don't feed me that schmaltz, darling. Not just at this moment. We well, couldn't you wait a day or two? The, the election for the Albury professorship is upon us. That's no part of my world for the time being. Oh, I, I hope you get it, of course, whatever happens. But we open at the Theatre Royal Newcastle on Monday next. So be it. I left the note on the piano.
I've tried Newcastle several times, sir, but your wife doesn't appear to be in. Well, thank you, Roger. No, not to worry. Bill Doctor is more discreet, is it not? Hello? Taking that research Hello? assistant that he is out to lunch every day. It's not at all what one would expect of a man of professor. One of our fellows, too? Perhaps it's a little unwise, but nothing more. Unwise or not, I can tell you that it's lost in Fisher's block of books. How do you know that? I must be talking to Dr. Woolley and to Fisher. And I can assure you that Jack Hughes will be next Aubrey Professor. Good evening, sir. Have I kept you waiting? No, no, Hodges. I was mistakenly early. I'm just putting my watch right by your clock. I'll pack you a glass of sherry. Thank you. We can expect a full house, as they say, it being election night. Yes, indeed. May I presume, sir, to wish you the very best of luck? Oh, thank you, Hodges. That's very kind of you. But you would do well not to be surprised, whatever happens. I am rarely surprised, sir, by anything that ever happens here. Here's to your brown eyes, Hodges. May they never meet. As it is over two centuries since there has been an election for the John Aubrey Professorship, we have had to devise a method whereby you will be relieved of the necessity of recording your vote in your own handwriting. I will now explain. There are two candidates, Dr. John Hughes and Professor Bowl Dottery, although an election is always so much nicer when there is only one candidate. However, yeah. Yeah. however uh, we have devised a method Hodges will pass among you and hand each elector two balls. A white one representing John Hughes and uh, a black one, Bowles Ottery. No reflection is intended, naturally. Naturally. After the balls have been passed among you, Hodges will ask you to deposit the ball representing the candidate you favor in this box. Will you please note the ball representing each candidate? A white one. John Hughes, and the black one, Bowles Ottery. Gentlemen, one moment. I have an announcement. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and King Hughes, and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. Uh, gentlemen, uh, let us dispose of this matter as rapidly as we may. Hodges, hand out the balls with all speed, will you? A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. I beg your pardon, sir. Pepper and vinegar, besides, are very good indeed. So, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we 
can begin to feed. But not on us, the oyster said, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said, if you admire the view. It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing, but cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. You're coming back to me now, didn't you? He was running for the university when he was an undergraduate. The 220, I think, was the distance. They've eaten everyone! I don't remember him swimming for the varsity. No, I don't. I'm sure he didn't. You didn't swim for the varsity, did you? Afraid he wasn't swimming, Dr. Woolley. He's dead. I suppose this makes you our new John Aubrey professor by default. How very fortunate for you. don't sound very welcoming. You took me by surprise. I was expecting another call. One you'd rather have had, do you mean? No, no, not at all. You don't sound very convincing, either. I don't know whether I sound it. I feel it. <laughs> well, that's all right, then. I telephoned because I've just heard the news, and I wanted to be the first to congratulate the new John Aubrey professor. Very kind of you, but probably also heard that the circumstances were not the most happy. Yes, what happened? I mean, why did it happen? The mystery. If you'll forgive me, I'd rather not talk about it. I quite understand. What are you doing? Oh, I was just thinking about going to bed. Like to come up and go on thinking here? No, I won't, if you don't mind. Oh, please don't misunderstand me. It's not that I don't want to. It's just... Well, I'm in rather a state of shock. And you'll remember we agreed we must be very careful about meeting in Ockham. Carrie Wary? You wouldn't bother if you really wanted to come. It's not that. Of course not, darling. I was only joking. Anyhow, I expect you want to wait in for the other call. Good night. Sorry you've been troubled. Hello?
Good evening, sir. Oh, good evening, Inspector. Won't you come in? Thank you. I hope you won't mind, sir. My intrusion is quite informal. I live quite close, and as I was passing, well, to be frank, I wondered if you could help us. If I can, Inspector. Perhaps I ought not to ask, especially when you're enjoying your leisure. Oh, nonsense. Come in. I think I know that pretty little piece I heard just now. My daughter plays the piano. She's very oh. fond of the old tunes. Uh, you wanted me to help you? If you can, sir, and if you'd be so extremely kind. Mm -hmm. This is all highly confidential. Of course. Please go on. Well, sir, I must be frank with you. We're worried about that inquest. Inquest? Inquest on Dr. Hughes. Oh, yes. Don't you think it's remarkable there should be three cases of this mysterious illness, and two of them resulting in death? Mm. Of course, we all have the greatest respect for the coroner, but... Yes. I did feel that he might have pursued one or two lines of inquiry a good deal further. Ah, oh, then you too were worried about the verdict of natural causes. Natural causes? Well, it does cover so many things, doesn't it? If I were killed by a thunderbolt, you would call that a natural cause. No. I think he must have had some sort of shock. But the medical evidence showed nothing. The post-mortem was pretty thorough, a slight congestion of the brain, but as you say, that could have been caused by anything. Hmm. Yes. You've nothing to suggest, sir. No, nothing, I'm afraid. I brought a transcript of the medical evidence. Mm -hmm. I thought it might be interesting to you as a chemist. It's just that we're unhappy. But you'll respect my confidence, of course. Oh, of course. Good night, Inspector. Good night, sir. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Oh, it's you, darling. Am I the wrong darling? No, no, of course not. I'd better not be, because I intend to be something much more. I can't talk to you now. I'll ring you later. and I won't. I think we ought to talk about the rat that ran and ran and ran and died. I see. I thought you would. Poor man, how he must be suffering. <laughs> No, thank you. I prefer to use my own, especially now. Oh, Kerry, you're a cruel, cruel man. Now, what's this about a rat that ran and died? Strange the others didn't. What others? I was just thinking that two or three people ran and died. Just like the rat. My eyes aren't just good to look at. I can see through them. And maybe put two and two together. Really? Like you must have done when Fred accidentally changed the book. What do you mean? But don't worry. I've changed my mind about the job. I've decided to settle for marriage. Marry you? <laughs> All right, laugh. I'm laughing. 
Don't forget, your future depends on me. Even now, I could stop you being John Aubrey Professor. You couldn't survive a scandal. No, thank you. My mummy told me never to take anything from strange men. I admire you, dearly. Really bright. But I know what I want. I want you. And I'm going to gobble you up. The future isn't going to be too bad. I've got things to offer. Fast. Where are my cigarettes? Ah. I said, you going? I wish I didn't have to. But now that you're going to become the respectable Mrs. Professor Rose Audrey. Yeah. We must think of your reputation. Don't fall into a hole and break your neck on the way back. I'm keeping my neck safe for you, my darling.
Perry? Perry? Sold out of everything else. Nothing left but chrysanthemums. That was my new funeral. What? Didn't you deserve that? Uh, sorry to be such an idiot. Nothing to be sorry for. I'm tired. It hasn't been easy to decide to come. <laughs> How's the tour? Oh, um, fun. All right, on its way. <laughs> I'm a bit past it, I'm afraid. Mm. As there was a week's gap, I thought I'd come back and see how you're getting on. Quite right. I was trying to make the place look a bit more habitable. Sarah's done awfully well. Mm, I'm sure she has. I thought I could do better. Shall I play you something? Something not too sweet. Hmm? A pretty little tune. I remember Bats, you told me he played the piano. They often do. It shows a better side of their nature, I suppose. Frankly, it upsets me. I like criminals to behave like criminals. They shouldn't be educated men living in decent houses. I agree, sir. Listening to that piano and thinking what we have to do. He's such a nice fellow. We got on very well together. Luckily, my professional training leads me to overcome any sentimental feelings, gentlemen. Can we get on with it? Armstrong, just before we go in, Understand me. I believe that when two people are as close together as you and I, and we are pretty close. Go on. What I'm trying to say is, if there's anything you want to talk to me about, please do. It won't make any difference to my love for you, whatever it is. Don't worry. I'll go. Won't you come in, gentlemen? Oh, darling, this is an old friend of mine, Inspector Butts of the Ockham Police. This is his superior, the Superintendent Rastley. I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. I didn't quite catch this gentleman's name. Chief Inspector Armstrong, New Scotland Yard. Chief Inspector Armstrong, New Scotland Yard. Oh, 
Oh, uh, a cigarette, gentlemen. Or a drink, perhaps. Thank you. No, this is not entirely a social occasion. I'm afraid uh, Mr. Armstrong has something of a professional nature. I wonder if you care to make a statement about the death of Miss Delia Brooks. I ought to advise you, you're not bound to answer any questions till you've consulted your solicitor. Solicitor? Oh, good heavens, no. Gentlemen, I'm entirely at your service. Your statement, then, sir. The statement. Yes, I understood from Butt that you were dissatisfied. So was I. I told him so at the inquest. In my opinion, the post-mortem examination was not nearly thorough enough. I thought the coroner could have gone a great deal further. What more can I say? I wonder if you care to tell us anything about Miss Brooks' personal life. No, nothing really. A not unattractive young lady, I would judge. Though, of course, I didn't see her in the most favorable circumstances. Yes, I suppose you could call her attractive. Those things are judged. Of course, we only met on the plane of work. You didn't meet socially? She didn't visit you and your wife here, for example? Oh, good heavens, no. No, my social acquaintance with Miss Brooks was limited to occasionally inviting her out to lunch. The Highland boy, I believe. Yes, now how... These trivial facts have a way of getting noticed, especially in a closed community of university. For example, I bet you don't know how the professor of Assyrian archaeology is in the habit of spending his Thursday afternoons. I haven't the faintest idea. We have. Oh, quite harmless, but uh, interesting to a student of humanity. Dear me, I see we shall all have to be very careful. Unfortunately, that's beside the point. Miss Brooks went away a couple of times recently, I gather. I'm afraid I haven't the faintest idea. Naturally. So naturally you couldn't know where she went. Obviously. And you wouldn't know, for example, whether she preferred the country or the seaside? Naturally. With respect, don't you think we ought to come to the crux of the matter? That is what I am endeavoring to do, sir. Professor Bolzotto, there have been three deaths in this university. Yes, tragic, tragic. And each victim suffered a toxic condition before they died, which suggests they were poisoned. Not very scientific, but a reasonable assumption, I grant you. The coroner had a similar idea at the inquest. That's as may be. Let us get to the point. By all means. You are a chemist? I assume that you knew that. You have access to poison? That's obvious. We believe, Professor Bowles Ottery, that you caused the death of Miss Delia Brooks by employing the same means which you used to murder Dr. Hughes and Mrs. Pugh Smith. With a poison unknown to science. Hmm? That may be. You had the opportunity, you had the means, and you had the motive. <laughs> I take it that you have some proof to back up this ridiculous assertion. No, I thought not. I can only think of two words. Absolute balderdash. Kind of you to provide. But there were none there yesterday. Filled it up from the ones you had in the lab. This is really very funny. Be the death of me. <laughs> 
Ha, 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 ha. 